Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video I will show you a game between Alexander Grischuk and Maxim Lagrave. This is a game from the Grand Prix chess tournament played in Riga in 2019. Alexander Grischuk had white pieces and he started with d4. Lagrave played the knight to f6, c4, g6, white to move. Knight to c3 is the most played move. Grishchuk played h4, super sharp and very ambitious in the style of the great Alexander Alehin. Black to move. Lagrave followed the general rule. If your opponent attacks on one wing, you strike on the other wing, or in the center. c5 was played. Benoni style. In the interview after the game, Lagrave said that he considered c6 with the idea to play d5. c5 was played. d5 and now b5 in the spirit of the Benko Gambit. c takes on b5, a6, e3. If b takes on a6, then black may play bishop to g7 or bishop takes on a6, keeping an eye on the e-pawn. So if e3 Bishop takes bishop on f1. Back to our game. e3, bishop to g7. If a takes on b5, bishop takes on b5. Bishop to g7, knight to c3, castling. Knight to f3, d6. Supporting the pawn on b5, pinning the knight. Rook to a3. a takes on b5, bishop takes on b5. Knight to a6 e4, knight to b4, bishop to e2 unpinning. If castling, bishop takes on f3, and after queen takes on f3, knight to c2, attacking the rook, after rook to e2, knight to d4. Back to our game. Bishop to e2, knight to d7, Grishchuk castled king's side, queen to b6, rook to e1, Queen to b7, bishop to g5, developing and attacking the pawn on e7. Bishop takes on f3, g takes on f3. If bishop takes on f3, knight to e5. After bishop to e2, c4. If queen to d2, knight from b to d3. Back to our game. Pawn takes bishop. Knight to e5. Rook to f1. Grishchuk was worried about c4. Queen to d2, rook sends the blue and then c4 still will be played. Back to our game. Rook to f1, c4, b3, rook from f to c8, bishop to d2, knight from b to d3, f4, attacking the knight. What is the best square for the knight? What would you do in this position if you had black pieces? Lagrau played queen to b4, attacking the rook. Knight to b1, defending. Of course, if f takes on e5, queen takes on a3. If rook goes to a1, then knight to f3, check, bishop takes on f3, bishop takes on c3, bishop takes on c3, queen takes on c3, b takes on c4, rook takes on c4, black is better. Back to our game. Knight to b1, defending the rook and attacking the queen. Looks sensible, doesn't it? c3. f takes on e5. Black to move. Not pawn takes bishop, but knight to b2. Removing the target, attacking the queen. Queen to c2. c takes on d2. Queen takes on b2. If queen takes on d2, queen takes on e4. So in this position, queen takes on b2. White is a piece up, but under tremendous pressure. Queen takes on e4. Queen takes on d2. Rook to c2, attacking the queen and exiting the bishop on e2. Offering to exchange queens. Rook takes on e2. Queen takes on e4. Rook takes queen attacking the pawn, which at move 3 looked very dangerous, but now helpless. 
E takes on D6, E takes on D6. Who is better? White is a pawn up and has two pass pawns on the queen side. So on the surface, it may look that white is better. However, white king is not too safe. The game continued. Knight to d2, rook to g4, check. King to h1, rook takes pawn on h4, check. The poor pawn never had a chance to go to h5. His destiny was to be a cannon fodder. This is check, king to g2, rook to d4. Knight to f3, black to move, I guess some players would take the pawn on d5. Rook to g4, check. King to h3, rook to b4. Rook to b1, rook to c8, king to g2, rook to c3, white to move. Knight to g1, if a5, then rook to g4, check, if king goes to h3, h5, and black wins. So we have knight to g1 removing the target, rook to c2, black is intending bishop to d4. Knight to f3, so if a5, bishop to d4. Knight to f3, rook to g4, check, king to f1, rook to f4, king to g2, rook to g4, repeating the position for the sake of the time control. This is move 40. King to f1, rook to f4, king to g2, g5, rook to f1. Again, if a5, then g4, and if knight to g1, rook from c takes on f2, and black wins. Rook to f1, defending the pawn. Rook to g4, check, king to h1. Rook to c3. Rook to g1. Rook to f4. Knight to h2, rook takes on f2. Rook takes on g5. Black to move, black play the move and white designed and the move is rook from c to c2. Grishchuk resigned. For the entertainment purpose, I will show you just one line. Let's say that white wants to save the knight. Knight to g4 and then rook to c1. Checkmate. Hmm, this line was too short. Let's try another line. Perhaps knight to f3. Sacrificing the knight to prolong the life of the king. Rook takes on f3. Rook to g2. Rook to h3. Check. King to g1. Rook to c1. Check. King to f2. Black to move. Black would love to play bishop to d4. Check. But that would be an illegal move. So perhaps king to h8. And let's say that white would love to get the pawn to the other side. Bishop to d4, check. King to e2, rook to c2, check. x in the rook on g2. If king defends the rook, rook to h1, check. Rook to g1, blocking, rook takes rook, check, mate. The white passed pawns on the queen side never had a chance to roll to the other side. Lagrave's attack was too fast. And let's go back to move 3. This is the position. c5 looks like a way to go against white's plan with h4 and h5. What else did we learn here? Well, don't always believe what the title says. I tried to simplify this game as much as possible but the game was extremely complex. However, if I showed you all the variations and all the tricks from this game, it would make you very tired and you would fall asleep. You don't want to fall asleep while watching a YouTube video, do you? What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.